Mike, you came to Kidderminster then looking for first team football and to say you've been busy to start with being honest, mate, I guess, how have you found it? Uh, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. I've uh, sort of, it's exactly what I came for. Uh, these first few weeks have um, really, I think, helped me progress, even though it's been a few weeks. I really feel like I've developed and gelled into the team as well. We talked before, uh, just after you, your first sign, and you were talking going in ahead to the Archbishop's game. It was your first game in the FA Cup, as you said. Had all, all the ingredients of, of a cup time, unfortunately, ended with an upset as well. Yeah, it was a very frustrating game for us all. I think um, we had ourselves to blame as players. All of us individually could have done better uh, in that game. Uh, but we le um, learned from it, and we, I think we went into the next game uh, re really well. I think we um, started really well, and then unfortunately, obviously, against Chester, we went down to 10 men early on. And then even then we could have uh, got an equaliser towards the end. Um, but yeah, I feel like we all learned from that experience. And went into Darlington having learned a lot from those first two games, I guess, and, and got good rewards for, for a good performance on the day. Yeah, I think it was needed. Uh, we, all, we all spoke as players and with uh, the manager and stuff saying that we, at the end of the day, we need results. It's not about how we play. You, you don't... Uh, get points off how you play, you get points off results and we went into that game playing well and obviously getting a finishing product. No, obviously not playing last weekend and, and the health of, of players everywhere being the most important thing, everyone kind of understands that, but just from a momentum point of view, how frustrating was it to not be able to kind of build on that Darlington performance? Yeah, it was frustrating but also it was a good opportunity to get uh, proper training sessions in. Uh, obviously there was no midweek game anyway, but still we had uh, quite a lot of um, heavy legs from three games in uh, eight days. Whereas we, having, if you look at it from a different perspective, having no game on that weekend really gave us an opportunity to work on our shape and uh, things like that. And I guess when it is that Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, relentless kind of spell, there's little time for anything other than perhaps a, a bit of shape work and training. So as you say, it, it allows you to kind of open a few more doors really. Yeah, exactly. And uh, try a few different things in training. Whereas uh, when you play on Saturday, Tuesday, mainly it's recovery and maybe one session before the, before the game where you'll do your shape and set pieces and stuff. And we've spoken to Kobe Arthur who gave us an insight in the summer how um, he's kind of played at, at higher levels than National League North, but he finds that being full time generally Quite a lot of training uh, routine as long as facilities are in place can kind of be very similar between high levels and, and, and probably the level we're looking at. Would you mirror that as well in terms yeah, of your 100, experience? Hundred percent. Um, I think even more so for me. I've not played at the first team high level. I've played at a twenty threes, uh, which whether you'd say it's a high level or not, it's uh, questionable. And when you look at that, we don't play as often, so we'd have a lot more training. Um, not in terms of days, but the days where we'd be playing, we'd be training. So if you look at it in that regard, it's actually harder here in terms of the amount of games you play and training on top of that load. Whereas if you have two games, three games a month for 23s level, it's half the games in the season. I, I know we're kind of very early in this season, so obviously you're still used to be fit and fresh, but kind of like a, as a young athlete, what, what are the differences on the toll it takes on your body with those two kind of comparisons that you've laid out there? Uh, I think f firstly it's just uh, concentrating on recovery and stuff because being one of the younger ones especially uh, I should be the, one of the freshest and being able to play every game 90 minutes no problem um, and I hope that will be the case uh, but in terms of the other lads and things like that I think everyone's just different on how they recover and as long as they get it right it's um, everyone should be fine and fit for each game. Now you've had a few games and plenty of training sessions to have a look at how do you kind of assess the squad coming into it as someone who's perhaps not seen too many National League North squads. I mean, have you been pleasantly surprised with the quality that you've seen at the teams at this level? Or? Yeah, 100% in our own team. I've been uh, very, like, uh, I'm really looking forward to playing with this team. You know, there's a lot of attacking threat. Uh, defensively, we've got good experience and players who can do both. Uh, players in the middle of the park who can do box to box, can do both sides of the game. And I think it's a really exciting team to be part of. And playing teams like Chester and stuff, you know, who finished in playoff spots last season, thinking we should have should have got a result, should have got something out of that game, is really uh, encouraging for this season. And you mentioned that kind of attacking threat. I know, obviously, you're kind of positionally on the pitch further back than that, but I guess 
the idea for you is that you have a, a, as quiet a game as possible and, and most of that action takes place in, in the attacking part of it. Have you kind of enjoyed watching the lads get forward and especially Darlington where we control the majority of the game? Yeah, 100%. Um, it's always a good day as a defender. As much as you love defending, it's always a good day seeing your team score and being able to sort of lock an opposition in their half type thing. Um, so as much as I've, I love defending, you've got to be thankful when you when your team's helping you out and you're doing well as a team that you don't have to do that much and you are scoring. Um, much like Darlington really, this weekend going to Chorley, a, a reasonably lengthy trek to a team that's going to be there or thereabouts. The lads need to be on that, need to be kind of reproducing that performance, I guess. Yeah, and like you said about the momentum before, I think we can still carry that momentum we had into this game because you're only as good as your last result. So that's still our last result, the win at Darlington, that we've got to carry on through to this game. And the boys have all talked about it and how we're, we're looking forward to getting another result. And I know you obviously won't be aware of this personally, but we struggled for back-to-back -back wins and results last season. So if the lads can follow up with a victory at the weekend, it, like you say, kind of sets that early tone, doesn't it? Yeah, 100%. And... Uh, you know, it's always good to have form and momentum, like you say, building on because it, it creates an atmosphere at the training group and at the training ground where uh, it's amazing to be a part of and that's what we want to achieve this year. And I guess you need that momentum now more than ever because that kind of atmosphere within the group is, is kind of having to overcompensate for the lack of atmosphere within ground, I suppose, really. Lads are going to have to get themselves up. Yeah, exactly. You want to be buzzing before a game. You don't want to be... Uh, you want to be thinking about the last game and you're not, like you say, you've not got fans to take you on, you know, 80th minute, 1-1 one, one, or things like that. Um, you know, it's frustrating to not have fans, but at the same time, we've got to do our duty to sort of produce for them what they can see on the television type thing or stream.